episode 19. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. A, why has RTG been away for three weeks? And B, I thought this was going to be the Werder Bremen game, Jack. Well, that is exactly... Well, I'm going to answer your two questions at once there. The reason this is so late, and the reason it's not the Werder Bremen episode, is because I'm an idiot. I record. I thought I was recording the Werder Bremen episode. I played the game. There was some good YouTube there. My emotions in that game went up and down. It was... It was, it was actually like I was a Magda Bug fan, I'm, I'm telling you now. But I'd forgot to hit record on the screen caption software on my computer. And I didn't realise until I'd simmed ahead, you know, played Stuttgart and Sandhausen off camera as well, that, and went into iMovie to edit all this up, that I hadn't recorded it. So there we go. So instead we'll be playing Erzgebirge Aue and St Pauli in the league, which are two big league games if you look at the table, which I'll explain about in a minute. So there you go. That's what we'll be playing today and what a way to bring the RTG back because these are two key games, a massive six points in total up for grabs in this game, in these games. But before we jump into those, I'll take you over what happened. So obviously, the Pokal game, we took on a high-flying Werder Bremen side who were managed by Gareth Southgate. It's a bit weird that... And I thought, okay... An interesting managerial choice, but very high-flying Werder Bremen. At the time, they were in third. They're in fourth now. They were in third. They were still in the title race, and they'd just beaten Bayern Munich 2-1 at the Allianz before they played us. So we weren't exactly favourites in this game, and we were expected to lose. But it's the way they lost. 6-5 on penalties. The penalty curse strikes again. And, yeah, I just don't think we like penalty shootouts at all. So I'll take you through what happened in the game. David Klassen got an early penalty because, well, basically, Barry Douglas killed uh, Rashica. So it was that. Barry Douglas actually killed Rashica. And um, it was a horrible tackle. Klassen steps up. He puts the penalty away. Then I'd say it was a pretty even game after that. With Verder just ed edging us on possession. We weren't really taking chances. And when we were... Pavlenka was on top form between the sticks. But then in the 81st minute, when Pavlenka was way off his line, Bruno went full Marcelino. If any Bundesliga fans like myself remember that, Marcelino, when he punted it for the halfway line, Bruno did the same right over um, Pavlenka's head and into the goal. Scenes in the MDZ arena, absolute limbs. Then it so even extra time, I'd say, although we did have a decent chance before, you know, spaffed it wide. And then we got down to penalty. So I'll take you through what happened. Corona misses. Actually, didn't miss. Viavino saved it. And I was like, OK, Lapervota, let's do this. Come on. Lapervota's penalty gets saved. Castagni steps up. He scores. All right, Coughlin needs to keep us in the game. What happens? Coughlin blasts it over the bar. We're out of the cup on penalties again. But to get to the third round, being a newly promoted, you know, to the Bundesliga 2 club, putting out two decent Bundesliga teams on the way as well, and holding a Werder Bremen side in top form like that, I've got to say, massively proud. Next season, aiming for quarters or semis, I'd say. Maybe a, another wee shock run. Maybe even winning it next season. You never know. We'll have to see. But that was absolutely fantastic um, to get that far into the cup. But the penalty curse struck again. We then went down to the Mercedes-Benz Bank Arena down in Stuttgart and got a 2-2 draw coming back for 2-0 behind. Now Stuttgart, of course, the first place team in the league. They are expected to get back to the Bundesliga because they stayed down a season longer than in real life. So they really want to be getting back to the Bundesliga. Kadlik and Furster got them 2-0 up. Bahed with two late goals in the second half made sure we got, came away with the point, which I was happy about. Now, the defence has been leaky. This has been a bit of a problem, but well done to Bahez. He keeps the, um, developing as a player. Really proud of him. And then we played Sandhausen at home and got a tight 3-2 win. Now, we were 3-0 up. Schiemann, Muschel and Steine all got us the goals. And it looked like we were cruising until Klaschna and Brown made us crap ourselves. Now, and even though that looks like a consolation from Brown there, it was not a consolation because in the injury time, he nearly scored. Viavino had messed up. He was way off his line, but luckily Brown had been played into an offside position. So we dodged a belt there. And it was a combination of we really should have been four or five up, but weren't they clinical enough? And then we got Leakey at the back 
towards the end as well, which it seems to be a recurring problem with us. And you guys seen it in the um, season last season, the three league, it's a problem. So that's something we might have to address, even if we stay down, which, as you can see, things are getting tight. So we are currently in the playoff spot, six points ahead of Union Berlin, which is why we can't really afford to lose the hour St. Pauli game. So we are six points ahead of Union and we're levelling points with Mainz and Stuttgart. So six out of six from these two games would be fantastic because it would take us top of the league. We've still got a really big chance at automatic promotion and potentially the Bundesliga 2 title, which would be massive because I did not expect us to be doing well this well. If we have to go up for the playoff, it makes more YouTube, better YouTube and there's a bit more drama, but I'd rather we go up automatically. So we will see, we're getting to the important part of the season now. We're out the cup, so we can purely focus on the league. Alf Gates Magdeburg, can we get promoted? This is the beginning of the journey, you'll find out. Now we're going to jump into this all East German tie. We're down near the Czech border in the Ore Mountains to play our at the Erzgebirge Stadion. Alf Gates FCM. Now I have made a few changes to the team, including formation. So our are in 12, we've got Hoxheed and Nazarov out, which is good because... They are danger men, so Oxshid injured and Nazarov suspended. So this is what we're lining up with today. 4-3-3 with a flat midfield. We've got Nganka and Kipri and Bahez up front. That's our front three, probably our best front three. Then in midfield we've got Gilmore, Ritter and Gajula. So we've got two attacking midfielders that will provide support to the front three. And then you've got Ritter who will anchor things down a bit. Then at the back we have Abels, Milosovic, Bruno, Lipa. And of course, with the captain's armband between the sticks, it's our veteran goalie, our hero, Viavino. Alf Gates FCM, let's get three points from Saxony today in this all East German class. And if you remember, we beat them 3 1 at home last time. So we're hoping to do the same, although the Erzgebirge Stadion is a fortress. Let's do this, boys. And Gajula's injured immediately. Oh, that's poo. Right. Oh, poo. Right, we're going to bring Steiny on him midfield. Just let me muck the midfield a bit about. A about a bit. It would be help if I could talk properly. So there you go. Gajula off injured. That's not good. Alf Gates Magdeburg. Okay, not much is happening. Those are famous last words. Is that what... Okay, we got the goal kick there. That's a... Oh! And Milosovic is off! Down to 10 men. Nightmare! This is not going well at all. Nightmare. Restart to the RTG. We're going to have to sacrifice a midfield that Baumhoyer's coming on. I think we've got to do the sensible thing here. If we come away with a, even just a draw out of this, I'll be surprised. If we keep the clean sheet and get a 0-0 draw, I'll be surprised. Not a great first half. Gazula having to come off injured, I'd suspect that's probably going to be a long injury. And then Milosovic gets his marching orders and just before half time as well. I'm disappointed. Discipline has been a problem as well. We're going to need to sort that out. Come on, boys. We need a big second half. We need a minor miracle. Hopefully the football gods will be smiling down on us. And I think Iwe are probably going to get their revenge. Yeah, and I think the expect has just happened. Tested it, scores. It's all about damage limitation now. I knew we are probably going to lose this game. Oh, Steiny's got a free kick. Steiny, what a goal! That's what we like to see. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Daniel Steiny makes me question my sexuality. No, ignore that comment. Anyway, Steiny gets us the goal back. Brilliant, boys. Come on. Right, I think we, right, we can only make one sub. I'm going to hold off on that in case we get another injury. We're going forward again. Oh, he's just been caught. No. Oh, God. Why did we do that? And Gankam, why did you lose it there? Devastating counter-attack from over there. It's 2-1. Ooh. Yeah, I think... I don't think we're going to get the point. It's getting too late for that yet. Hello? Nah, that's it. Hello, still got time. Viavino feeds it up. Gets caught in the air. We should have won that ball. And that's all she wrote. A 2-1 loss. To be fair, with 10 men against Iwe with the way they were pressing on us, 
We're just lucky they're not clinical. Um, I suppose if Nazarov and Hawkshade had been playing, that probably would have been a different story. A bit of a nightmare to lose that because it sort of jeopardises our place in third. Miller's always from disappointed and his discipline has been a problem. Steiny, all credit to him. All credit to him for that free kick. That was an amazing goal, but in the end, it's not enough. I'm a bit devastated with that one, but there we go. We come away from Saxony empty handed. It was, I'm, I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to find him for that. That's I've got to put my foot down with him. Because Eula's out for three weeks, not too bad. You know what? I'm going to stick by my keeper. It's not his fault. I'm going to stick by him. Yeah, close game, so Erzgeberg will take their chances. Positives, defence team tackles well, defence dominating the air, and we concede a few clear-cut chances. Negatives, poor discipline, poor shot stopping from the goalkeeper, wasteful goalkeeper distribution. Now, if we hadn't went down to 10 men and I'd sort an hour hadn't have been as sort of clinical, if we'd been more clinical, different story. But that's football. I am annoyed. And Milosovic, I, I had to find him, put the foot down. There we go. An annoying three points to drop. And at least he's accepted he's fine. He's taken it on the chin like a man because he's a vet. He's, you know, he's a professional. He knows what he needs to do. So there you go. That is a bit of a nightmare. And Union won their game. So they've closed the gap. They've closed the gap on us as well, and we've got a really tough one against St. Pauli. I'm not particularly looking forward to this because I think we're probably going to lose. I'm glad Via Vino, I will stand with him. And Unirio is injured as well. He twisted his knee in training. This is a problem. The injuries are striking as well, and we're not, but please don't. I really hope we don't mess promotion up like this. I really hope we don't mess it up like this. We're, we we need to win this game to keep third. Put it like that. That's the position we're in. I think I'm going to completely change it up for this game. We're going to go 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah, we're going to, I'm going to stick it in balanced as well. I'm going to keep it in balanced. As you, right, there's, here's, you can see our line-up for this game. Alfgate's FCM, we really need the three points if we want to keep up with the promotion race. Come on, boys, we're not bottle jobs. Magdeburg are not bottle jobs. Let's do this. As you can see, a lot of issues, a lot of suspensions and injuries. I'm hoping Steiny can make the difference. And that's how, as you can see, there's how St. Paul are going to line up. I hope we can expose them. Alfgate's FCM. I'm going to immediately fibble some. This the discipline is shocking. We need. I'm a bit annoyed. We really need to fix this. And St. Pauli score one minute into the game. Oh God! It's it keeps getting worse. This is bad. This is really bad. We're not. We we need to get our heads up here, boys. This is ridiculous. Okay, we're in. We're in. Ah. Oh. Right, come on, a goal now. A goal, a goal then would have really helped us. One shot on target. St. Pauli took their chance. Two minutes into the game, I thought it was one. Conte, it's not good enough, boys. It is not good enough at all. St. Pauli playing counter, I think we are probably going to sit on defensive now. Come on, boys. Alf Gates, Magdeburg, big second half. We need to get at least a point in this one or else we're in trouble. I think, yeah, that's another free kick to St. Paul. We need to stop giving these away. We're lucky to put that over there. I think we're going to make some subs. Hello? Come on. Steiny! What a man! Come on! There we go. 1-1. One, one. Steiny! What a player. What a player. Just what a man, right? Bahez. I'm going to bring Bahez off. Keep Reach coming on. Ah, uh, who else do we bring on? I think I'm going to bring Bell Bell on. Yep, there we go. And if we can hold on and get the point, I'll be happy. Those are famous last words, though. 
Yep, that St. Pauli going to score. I've seen it coming. I've seen it coming a mile away. This defending's not good enough, boys. It's two games we've scored and then immediate, more or less immediately conceded after. And it's another disappointing 2-1 defeat. The defence are really annoying me now. Really annoying me. This is ridiculous defending from the lads here. And another, those are six points. Those are a bad six points to drop. Really bad six points to drop. Two losses on the trot. Yeah, we, we really, we should have got the draw. But I am blaming the defence. We've not got anybody to blame but ourselves. Wingers struggled to make an impact. Lost defensive shape top. And wingers failed to track back with runners. But the defence dominated there. It's all fine and well defence dominating there. That's not good enough. We are relying on Union dropping points now. We really are. We, we really need to rely on Union dropping points. I am extremely disappointed in the lads. Two games we should have at least got a draw, draws out of, in my opinion. Two games when we equalise and then can see the goal more or less immediately after. It's disgusting. It's not good enough at all. And this, we could be throwing all that hard work we had at the start of the season down the toilet. But anyway, not a great start to the RTG back, but there we go. Um, well, welcome to my world. <laughs> So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Off camera, I'll be playing Holstein, Kiel and Mainz, which are two big games. And then I'll be back on camera with you guys for Osnabrück, 1860 Munich and Union Berlin. Three game bumper special in the next episode. So keep your eyes out for that. As always, guys, if you enjoyed my content, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you're new to the channel and you're swinging by the first time, please go back to episode one. Please subscribe, that would be much appreciated and I hope you enjoyed the video guys, until next time, jack out.